Hello and welcome into my attic. So to make this beautiful Easter project, you can use any normal frame with chicken wire, or like me, you can just use empty toothpaste boxes, which worked out really well. First of all, you've got to stuff your toothpaste boxes. Um, you can use cotton wool, or you can use scrunched up newspaper. Then you want to seal the boxes down with masking tape, placing the masking tape in both directions and on each end of the box. Obviously you can position your frame in any direction, portrait or landscape. I am going to go with landscape. So when it comes to sticking the boxes together, obviously you can use hot glue, but I'm using a slow drying glue, which is wood glue or PVA glue. Um, if you choose to use a slow drying glue, put the glue on both of the surfaces of the boxes for um, a much better adhesion. And then to bind them together, I'm going to just use elastic bands and let them dry off for a few hours. So when it came to the backing of the frame, the netting or the chicken wire, I actually chose to use a sack of potatoes. The sack of potatoes is made of plastic. So when I make the paint, I have to make it sturdy enough so that it doesn't chip off of the plastic net. So on the screen now is the brown acrylic paint mixture. It's just brown acrylic paint mixed with bicarbonate soda and PVA glue or wood glue. So it's nice and creamy, but it's also nice and gritty to give our plastic netting a nice rusty crusty look. So with the paint mixture, I'm sponging the, the mixture onto the net and I will then dry it off with a hairdryer and then I will repeat this process another two times so it's three layers in all. I don't know if you can see it very well but this is the first layer. This is the second layer and this is the third. So here I am preparing a clean surface. I'm going to make some rusty coloured paint and to give it more stain power, I'm going to add some PVA glue or wood glue, whichever you prefer. And then I'm just gonna dab it here and there onto the netting. So if I put this black paper behind the netting that you can see a little better, the, the rusty colour. And this is the plastic netting, how it was before. So at last our frame is dry and we can take off the elastic bands. Now we're going to decorate with this beautiful silver plastic chainy thing that I've used in the past and it's really useful it's cheap and cheerful let's say I just cut out the strips that I needed and I have to glue them on because these uh, strips and are not self adhesive strips so just put a, a little glue on the box and stick them down very easy So I'm going to add another round of jewels. These are pearls, you know, cut in half, and I'm going to stick them around uh, below the chain, the silver chain. And these are self-adhesive, so I don't even have to use glue. 
I just think it gives it a little, little bit more interest. Okay, so it's all stuck down and I'm just gonna wait for the glue to dry off a little, maybe a couple of hours time, then proceed with the next stage. Well, there's always work to do, so while the glue's drying on the frame, we can go ahead and paint some of the decorations that's going to go into the frame. So I took a peat pot and I cut it in half. I sliced it right down the middle and I took that then and cut it in half, like half a little pot. And then I did the same thing with another, but instead of cutting it straight across, I cut it slanted. And I want to make two kind of vases with these and place one inside the other. Then I took a couple of styrofoam rabbits and I'm going to create a, a paint mixture and I'm going to paint all of this, these things I've created and uh, I'm going to make a gritty paint because I want them to look a little bit stony or textured, let's just say textured. So to make life easier, I just stuck a couple of skewers into the bottom of the rabbit for easier handling and to make it easier to paint. This brown colour is just a base colour paint. We are going to um, decorate over this when it's dry. Um, it really looks like chocolate, but I didn't mean it to look like chocolate, but <laughs> it does and it makes me want some chocolate. <laughs> But I eat enough of that already, so <laughs> better leave that. So now that the frame's dry, we can mod podge the napkin over it. Okay, so I want to show you a quick way of preparing your napkin for mod podging, because I don't know if you know, but um, a napkin can tear very well in one direction, but in the other direction, it doesn't want to tear at all. But when it comes to the other direction, look how how badly it tears. It just it just doesn't want to want to do it. So this is what you have to do. So obviously, first of all, you have to um, separate the layers because there's normally about two or three layers to a napkin, and you just want to get to your single layer. So when you get to your single layer, just lay it flat down and find the direction that tears easily. Um, and just split it apart with your hands like this. So there couldn't be anything more straightforward really. You just scrunch it up and tear it off. And you do that for the whole uh, piece of napkin. And within a minute, you've, your whole napkin's ready for mod podging. So for this actual project I have used um, a yellow napkin because I can see then very well where I'm gluing it, where I've glued it, etc. Because if it's white you can't really see very well. And so I just proceeded with this and getting it well into the jeweled area. What I normally do is mod podge half of the project then go and dry it off with the hairdryer and then carry on mod podging the other half of the project. That way you, I can handle it better without getting sticky fingers. So now the frame is completely dry, I let it dry overnight. Uh, we're going to um, brush on our first layer of paint. Here's the recipe. Uh, it's different from before because um, the recipe before had bicarbonate soda in which makes the paint gritty. Whereas this 
um, is a smooth paint because I'm going to put cornstarch in it. So there's a lot of difference in texture um, between using cornstarch and bicarbonate soda. So here for the rabbits, the same thing applies. The brown undercoat was with bicarbonate soda, which is gritty. And here I'm making a beige um, acrylic paint mixture using cornstarch, which is a smooth paint. So when I've covered the whole thing, I'm going to then dab it off again. Um, not all of it, of course, but I want to s the, the brown gritty paint to show through a little. So it's kind of, you know, two toned and not just one block of beige. The cleaner the sponge is, the more the paint will come off. So, you know, you can turn the sponge or dab it on some card or some napkin to keep it cleaner. So the brown paint of this frame is dry and that's the base coat. Now I'm placing a second coat which is like a beige woody colour and then on top of that I'll actually put the, the colour of the frame which will be like a bluey green colour because when I distress frames I like to have several colours showing through. So while the frame is drying, I'm going to grab my dry bunnies and I'm going to uh, draw in their eyes using a basic brown felt tip pen with a larger nib. So the beige paint is now dry and I'm going to paint on my last bluey green coat of paint. Um, before I do that I'm going to rub over candle wax all over the frame because when I distress the frame with sandpaper it will come off much more easily. This is the frame painted and dry. Um, unfortunately, I didn't film me painting it, but you know, it's just me straightforward painting it with some chalk paint. It's a teal color, um, turquoise teal. And now I'm just distressing it with 220 grit sandpaper. And I'm doing it quite gently really, because you know, due to the fact that there's paper underneath it, like boxes and napkin, so gently does it. So here we have the frame distressed and finished and I'm really pleased with it, I think it looks Really lovely and kind of antique as well. So to be perfectly honest, with these pots, uh, first of all, I had one idea in mind, but as I was going along with the project, I changed my mind. I was just going to paint them like I'm doing here, but in the end, I also added, um, covered them with paper. So this really is a stage that for what I'm doing can even be left off because in the end I just covered them with paper. So, you know, it depends on how you want to decorate them. So for the design on my pots, I printed out these um, designs from my laptop. So I cut the strips out and Mod Podged them on.
So I wanted to make the pot look old, so I just went over um, the pot with an orangey musty colour. For the next pot, I printed out this floral design and I stuck it all over the pot. So this product is probably something that most of you know, uh, it's called Glossy Accents because it is very glossy, but if you don't have this you can always use um, a glossy varnish or even nail polish would work. Um, yeah, the pots came out lovely and I thought this would give it something extra. So now at last it's time to put on the netting and I'm just going to go with something really simple. You can use hot glue or uh, staples or anything you would like but I am just going to cut it to size and use masking tape. I really like to travel light, <laughs> um, yeah so as I said, I'm going to put on masking tape and I'm going to put it obviously all the way around the net. So here is the frame and the net together looking, if I may say so myself, lovely. So I'm going to decorate the bunnies in a very simple way, nothing over the top. And I'm going to give them like a ribbon around their necks. Um, one has got a white ribbon which is just white graffia and the other, believe it or not, <laughs> is um, a tea bag, a piece of a tea bag because I didn't have any pink ribbon and the only um, pink thing that I had was a forest fruits tea bag and that was a nice pink so I just used that, a piece of that. And then I stuck a rose on them as well. Well, with this being an Easter project, I wanted to um, write somewhere Happy Easter, obviously. So I thought I could make a couple of tags and stick them on the bunnies and they could express this uh, Happy Easter sentiment. So I just cut out some cardstock um, in the shape of a tag and I uh, printed out on my, from my computer the words Happy Easter and stuck them onto the tags. First of all though, I pierced a hole into the tags and then I outlined the tags with a special black cream um, which I made myself. It takes the place of ink or of antiquing wax which I didn't have so I had to invent something else. So I got out my face cream one day and I added some black acrylic paint and I used it as an antiquing wax or as, a, as an ink rather and it really worked well and I've used it ever since. Uh, it glides on, it stays on as you, as you put it on, it stays that way, it doesn't change and it just dries up like a paint and I think it works really well. You know, it's probably hasn't got the benefits of wax or anything like that probably but you know, just to outline something, it works well. 
What I'm doing here is just sticking the labels onto the tags and then I want to thread some string through to the tags as well. Uh, the easiest way to do that is put some glue on the end of the string to uh, like tighten it up and harden it up so it threads through easier. And then just do a couple of knots and then I just uh, suck the string onto the bunny's paws as if he's holding the tag and then onto his body to keep it firm and still. I have wooden letters as well and I'm going to paint them the same blue as the frame and then I'm going to stick them onto the net and write the word Easter. Here are some more decorations that I'm going to add inside of the frame. Here I'm using hot glue to uh, stick down my Spanish moss and one by one I'm going to be adding the rest of my decorations into the frame and I'll use hot glue and I'll use also some wood glue depending on what I'm sticking down. <music> 